rather have you was super fun, but it was one I don't think we either realized was going to be what it became. Um, I love it. It's obviously done really well for me in Texas, but we, I had a, again, I played, sometimes you come into a writing session and I'll play voice memos and I'm really embarrassed of them. And I played one and it was me horribly singing some sort of line about I'd rather have wine than dinner. And I played it and instantly said, oh, that's dumb. I'm so sorry. Let's pretend I never did that. And I feel like we came back to that line and Zach's like, but wait a second. What about, you know, truth or dare and things that you want, but you're not supposed to have. And then what came out of it was so cool. Yeah. It wasn't intentional. Yeah, that was a great, and that, that's a great song. And, and again, I, I've loved watching the, the chart performance. It's one of mm -hmm. your highest ones, right? Mm -hmm, the highest, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so um, <clears throat> that's cool. And, and I mean, I think that that classic writing style of, you know, the yin and the yang, mm -hmm. I'd rather have this than this, and I'd rather have you, ultimately, mm -hmm. is a, re a really compelling way to write, a sneaky way to write a love song. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's fun. Yeah. It has some edge. I always say I don't like to write light. I don't like to write love songs. So this is as close as we'll get. This, was, this one's snuck in. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd rather have you.